Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
Denounce him. Let us denounce him. Says all my close friends, watching for my ball. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overturn him and take our revenge on him. The Lord is with me as a treasure warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome. They will be gratefully ashamed, for they will not succeed. Their, their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who test the righteous, who see the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evil This is the word.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today was Confirmation Sunday at the other church, but the text, the text fits especially because our young people are here today, and it fits because all of us also need to hear it. And it is our second in our series of the difficult sayings of Jesus. When each of us took our place at the Lord's table, we have to make no mistake about what's taking place. It is one in many Sundays of receiving the medicine of eternal life, a restoration of our body and our soul, so that we can go back out into that world and make a difference. And for some of us, that difference that we make may be just massive. They might say our name for generations, or it might be something very small that's only remembered by one or two people. It could be as simple as bringing someone to Christ, which is the most wonderful thing of all. And that all belongs and begins right here with receiving that medicine. And every week, when we have it, we need it. Because we know, the older we get, that the world wants us to make our lives all about us and no one else. Every man for himself, and the one who dies with the most toys wins. It's about appearances. Sometimes it is about appearing as a devout and spiritual person who helps others. But that's only a mask that's somewhere. Deep inside, it remains all about them. Jesus ran into exactly the same thing among those Pharisees during his ministry here on earth. One day he was surrounded by a great crowd, as he often was, of people genuinely seeking the kingdom of heaven, looking to him for answers. But also present were those false teachers, the ones who should have been examined, but were anything but. And Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with a finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. And they love the place of honor at the feasts, and the best seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the marketplaces, and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man the father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ, the greatest among you, will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. For you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would go to enter in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel across the land to make a single convert, and when he becomes a convert, you make him twice the child of health as you are yourselves. Have a problem with that. <laughs> the Pharisees are concerned only with jockeying for position among themselves, receiving adulation from the people. Each of them craves to be regarded as higher than the next one. They want to be seen as the most spiritual, so when it was time to fast, they would make sure that their cheeks looked very hollow. Oh, their stomach hurts. And oh, look, look at how they are suffering. Suffering for the Lord. How spiritual. How virtuous. They love to pray long-winded prayers even longer than our prayer of church. Publicly, on the street corner, raising their hands to heaven so that everyone could see and hear them. The whole world would be humbled by their piety. See how earnestly and unselfconsciously they pray. They loved to make a big show of money when they gave their offering. In those times, the offering was a brass horn, a bronze horn. When you threw your offering in, it clanked, 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 clanked down into the box. 
So the more you gave, the more noise you made. The bigger the spectacle. How generous. But through all those outward acts, they were attempting to win the affirmation of their peers and respect and an awe and yes, even the fear of the little folk. There's nothing better. And being called rabbi in front of everyone in the marketplace. They loved those titles of honor, loved it as if it was their passion. If they actually managed to help anyone by doing many of those things, it's of little significance to them. Their hypocrisy ran from the small stuff to the biggest actions and everything in between. Anything they could do to help them stay on top. Because it was all about appearances. They appeared to be whatever the people needed to be. Do they need a leader? They would step right up and help make decisions. They would settle disputes, but always in their favor. If the people suddenly held some group or organization in contempt, well, they would ridicule them too, to retain the support of the people. See how well the great teacher agrees with all of us, how wise. It's all vanity. Everything they do, they do to be seen by others. All to be called rabbi, or teacher, or father, or leader. Jesus sets them straight if only they will listen, and we too need to listen. Because as advanced and as complex as society has become, vanity and seeking approval, being held in high esteem by others, that remains a big, maybe the biggest part of our sinful condition. And Jesus, as usual, turns that right on its ear. To all of those examples of lusting for power and approval, Jesus witnessed the Pharisees doing all those things, and he replied, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who hears in secret will reward you. And when you fast, notice he doesn't say, if you fast. When you fast, don't screw up your face and look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees it in secret will reward you. Now, Jesus doesn't mean don't call your Father, Father. Don't call your teacher, not call your teacher, teacher. Don't use proper titles for elected leaders, folks in our church, people who have offices. It's not what he meant to call. He means don't feed into the delusions of men who are seeking to deceive you. There is no other God but God, no other Father in heaven. But not only are we to not, not to call any other being Father, we are also to be watchful that we don't fall into that same trap ourselves, the same trap that the Pharisees fell into. Because it's important as not following those who want to lead us away from the faith that we have been taught is remaining steadfast in the face of the inevitable calls to change and to compromise that we have all seen begin. For our youth, I'm afraid, it is only going to get worse. We're surrounded by many unsung heroes, people who have done this precisely that, not only in the church, in the regular world too, some that worked simply for the betterment of their neighbors' lives. Others became a catalyst for changing history merely by doing the right thing, the honest thing, the godly thing. Lois Gibbs protected hundreds from the health and genetic damage of toxic waste. She was an Iron Falls, New York housewife in the early 70s. She watched her child come down with a very rare illness and then watched all of the children of her neighbors get sick too. And after learning that they were living next to 20,000 tons of toxic waste, and that there was no organization that existed to address the problem, 
Gibbs founded the Citizens Clearinghouse for Hazardous Waste, now known as the Center for Health, Environment, and Justice. Thanks to her, over 800 families were evacuated and cleanup began. And if it weren't for her, there would be no U.S. Environmental Protection Agency super fund to clean toxic sites around the country. She was not popular, and her life was made very difficult, but she stayed the course for what was right. And we're in the 70s for some reason this morning, but near midnight on June 17, 1972, a security guard named Frank Wills was making his rounds around an office and hotel car when he noticed that someone had placed some tape over a lock on a basement door. And he thought another worker must have left there accidentally, so he removed it. And the next night, he saw it again. Again. And he finally called the police. And the rest after that was history. Because two years later, President Nixon resigned from the disgrace over his involvement in the cover-up at the Watergate Hotel and Office Company. Mr. Wills, by conscientiously doing his job, helped break one of the biggest scandals in U.S. history, although all of us have probably never, ever heard of him. The truth won in those two cases. Sometimes the good guys win. Sometimes they don't. But God's truth remains. Don't see the accolades in them. Don't attempt to be the one who is called teacher or boss or leader, if invited to lead, lead by example as Christ did, and your Father in heaven who sees in secret, sees your works, because he gave you those works to glorify him. Ultimately, there is only one who is teacher, one who is instructor, one who is father. And we are to live together as one to further his kingdom. We have one baptism, one faith, one word of all. Be strong. We'll not make any of us up. But only your Father in heaven sees what is in your heart. It looked as though Jesus had been defeated by the Jews, by the Romans, by death itself. But Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He defeated sin, death, and the power of the devil. And he did that so that you, freed from the bondage of sin, can stand for God's truth. Among the heroes we know, the heroes that we will never know. Because it is a joyful privilege. Because you have been rescued and are free in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
Help us to live holy and righteous lives by the power of your Spirit. And keep us from surrendering ourselves to the slavery for which Christ has set us free. Faithful God, give healing and strength to the sick and all afflicted in mind and body and your Spirit. And grant to those who struggle the gift of peace in mind and heart. Hear us especially for those who have requested our prayers, especially Everett Jackson, who is having surgery for a fall on Monday, brother of Marianne Van Paul's, and for all those we now name in our hearts. Restore our nation and the world and help and life, and preserve us from pestilence and fear. Faithful God, give courage to those in your life center and comfort those who mourn. As we recall the saints who trusted in you in life and who died in Christ, encourage us by the witness of your grace and their faith, so that when Christ comes in his glory, we may be found faithful and delivered with them into the glory of your eternal presence. Faithful God, sanctify us as your people and make us bold to confess you on earth. When this earthly life is ended and we stand before you on high, grant us to hear the Savior's acknowledgement that we are his and he is ours for Faithful God, by your word and table, we continue to feed and nourish your people with all that will sustain our lives and all. Help. Help us to receive these gifts with faith and with repentance. Bring us to that day when all earthly divisions will cease and united in faith. We shall be one people together before your altar. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All these things, Father, and everything else for which we need, we pray you grant us for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ who died and rose and lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen.
Christ on the same night in which he was betrayed to breath. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take me to this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 